Hi everyone, Matt again. Uh, back this time with something a little different than before. For any console collection, there is a wealth of pirate carts and fakes on the market. Usually these carts are your typical 32-in-1 deals where there's actually six games duplicated four times each under various different titles. But every once in a while you will come across a game that wasn't officially sanctioned by Nintendo themselves, but is actually independently published. Uh, usually these are by Taiwanese development teams, and sometimes these are even completely new engines. If you look at the Go Win games, for example, these are things I'd like to share with you all. So while most of them aren't great games themselves, they can look pretty cool in your collection. And thus, boy, curious. Just gonna let you have a little giggle at that title and then jump straight into the first episode. This Sonic 3D Blast. Yep, that's right. A Sonic title for the Game Boy. Well, this may come as a shock to you, but this game wasn't actually created by Sega. The first time we'd see Sonic on a Nintendo hardware wasn't until Sonic Advance on the Game Boy Advance in 2001, and this game was made in 1999. So weirdly enough, it predates it. Um, neither is it a port of the Game Gear's Sonic 3D Blast, either. It is, give or take a lot of sprite drips, a new Sonic game, albeit one heavily influenced by the other entries in the series, and one that uses Rockman World 3's engine. So, this game is made by a company called Young Young, who are famous for their terrible, terrible scores, as you can hear now. Um, if you couldn't tell, that music is actually a bastardization of the title screen music from Sonic and Knuckles, and trust me, it gets worse. Gotta love that bleeping plays at the start of every level. So, for starters, Sonic has all his Mega Drive controls, there's a jump and a spin, but unlike the regular Sonic, killing enemies is a bit of a pain in the ass. You need to head stomp them a la Mario, otherwise you take a hit. Also, different from the previous Sonic titles, rings don't spill out to view, and invisibility boxes don't have their own theme music. Why would they, and can you imagine how terrible they would sound in this version of the game? But it means you walk right into enemies and get hit, which kind of sucks. As I previously mentioned, Sonic has a spin attack which can be accessed by holding down and B, but it is effectively useless. The way enemies are placed makes it impossible to use, and when curled up in a ball, you take damage. Great times. It's pretty much in just for aesthetic reasons, I think. Sonic controls pretty terribly besides this. After hitting an enemy with a jump, it will cause Sonic to walk after he touches back down on the ground. Making precise platforming a huge pain in the ass. He can also fall through platforms, which, again, massive pain in the ass. As well as him jumping a mile every time he gets hit by a floating enemy, usually sending you spinning to your death. The game's level design is perhaps some of the worst I've ever had the displeasure of experiencing as well. The first level based on Green Hill Zone isn't too bad, but the second level based on Sonic and Knuckles' Flying Battery Zone is just the fucking worst. It has pit traps that are instant kills, poorly placed enemies, and a whole lot of annoying platform sections at the end of the level. I got so frustrated while creating this video I could not be asked to complete it, so sorry you will not see the third. The levels are trying to use the multi-route strategy as well that other Sonic games use, but they're neither worth your time. They lead either to pit traps, or, in the case of the second level, impossible jump scenarios. I can't help but think that spring trap was meant to be here. Oh, and did I mention the game is buggy as hell? For example, once fall jump, and... Dead game. This is perhaps one of the most satisfying moments of this playthrough. Seeing this terrible fucking game die in front of me, slowly. Brother things such as sprite magic in themselves in and out of existence, as well as the level's end goal deciding whether it wants you done with the level, and more screen tear than a game of Titanfall, it makes for a truly horrific game experience. While this is a fun item to own, I really don't recommend you picking it up for anything more than a curiosity or to troll the hardcore Sonic fan in your life. That's all we've got time for this episode, folks. Uh, please rate and subscribe if you've enjoyed this episode, and there will be more episodes of both Biographic and Boy Curious soon. Game on, guys.